Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to a different style of a video today. I'm going to be doing a Christmas ranking, yes you've heard that right, a Christmas guide uh, as such, because what we need to remember is that most LEGO fans aren't serious collectors. They don't want to go back and collect nostalgic and older sets, uh, purely because it's very tedious and, well, yeah, they're very expensive, uh, yet yeah, most people only buy retail products. Most buyers are also parents looking for good presents who don't want to spend hundreds of pounds on a retired set. So this is also a video for you. You get a sort of a take from a, a hardcore LEGO fan on uh, what to choose, what to buy and what to not buy. So today I've chosen the five best LEGO Star Wars sets still on the retail market today uh, and a few honourable smaller mentions for little gifts and also some sets you should avoid. Starting out with the first set of my top five and I'm going to go ahead and say that this is the best LEGO Star Wars system set available right now on the retail market. It is set 75337, the ATT Walker with 1,082 pieces costing £120. A lot of modern LEGO Star Wars sets are getting pricey. A lot of them are 150, some ones are even 180. This thing comes in at 120, which I think is pretty fair, and I I think it is definitely worth your money. Now, to the actual design, it is only really a light upgrade. A lot of the design retains the same from the 2013 version, and the reason why I don't own this set is because I do own the 2013 ATTE. If your child or whoever you're buying this for does own the ATTE from 2013, don't buy this set. It is a waste. It is pretty much the same ATTE. This one's better. This one is 100% better. But yeah, don't waste your money by that. Now, in terms of the actual upgrades, the biggest upgrade of this entire walker is the interior. The last ATT hardly, I mean, it, I'm going to go ahead and say that it didn't even have an interior because the interior was so bad. Yeah, this walker's got, I mean, if you watch any review, any professional review on this thing, you can see the interior is just wonderful. Loads of space for your clones in there. And the other big change is the feet. The feet have been uh, very slightly changed. They are more accurate. They use uh, more plates as it turns to last time they used dish pieces. Yeah, they're a lot more accurate, the feet. There's the accurate slit in the, uh, the uh, middle of the six feet. One thing to go ahead and point out is that this walker doesn't have a lot of posability. And that's kind of a cliche for uh, Lego Star Wars walkers. They can't really move. The only real walker with posability is the at -At walker, which I'll get onto uh, very, very shortly. But yeah, uh, as in terms of that, there's not a lot of posability. Everything else is pretty much the same, though. The cockpit is pretty much the exact same. The smaller turrets, the top turret is very, very similar. They still don't have the accurate elevation of the turret, which uh, is slightly disappointing, but it's okay. And in terms of figures, of course, this is the debut of Commander Cody. So yeah, your kid probably wants this set just for Commander Cody. Now it's not worth buying a whole 120 uh, pound set for one figure. Commander Cody is a pretty damn good figure. He is probably one of the most sought after minifigs that have only just actually had their debut in phase two armor. Uh, so that is a big plus to the set. There are eight figures in total. I think the battle droids now there are a few downsides Yes, I will get into the downsides. I feel like that these three battle droids are a bit boring And I feel like yeah, the clones are great. You get a clone gunner, you get some other 212 clones That's all well and good, but I think these battle droids we could have had super battle droids We could have had some magna guards in there maybe something else other than just plain b1s because you know, at this rate, I mean, the amount of B1 battle droids I've got, like, <laughs> it's, it's insane. Also, I want to touch on the side build, because I'd like to go ahead and say that this is a pretty unnecessary side build. And, you know, no one is buying this set for the little DSD one, the Dwarf Spider Droid. No one's buying the set for the Dwarf Spider Droid. You're buying it for the ATTE. So I feel like that the inclusion of that ah, is a bit, I don't know, it's a bit you know, not very well sought after. It's not really well thought through, particularly because we've had a lot of DSD-1s in recent years, and we've never had a LEGO Crab Droid. This set is from Revenge of the Sith, 
and there are crab droids in this scene. We've never seen a Lego crab droid, so yeah, that would have been, I think, a much better conclusion, uh, sorry, inclusion to actually have the ATT. Going into the ranking, this thing is of course a 10 out of 10. I don't see this stopping. Uh, I don't see anything stopping this set from getting a 10 out of 10. This set is pretty much perfect. Now getting into the second set of the top five, marking the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back. <sighs> it's the Attack Walker, set 75288 with 1,267 pieces. <sighs> If I was to have any of these sets, I own a few, I'd have this one. It's on its way. <laughs> it's on its way right now. I don't know when it's going to arrive. It's going to arrive uh, soon, hopefully. I can do a review on this thing. Uh, I have hardly anything negative to say about this one. It is so damn near perfect. The reason why I put the ATT over it, uh, over this thing is because the ATT is a better LEGO Star Wars set. It's better value. It's better value for money. This thing comes in at 150 quid. It's a bit pricey. 150 is a bit pricey. Obviously, this is the generic price for your large Star Wars vehicle. I mean, Millennium Falcons used to be 120, now they're 150. The Atats, I'm sure the last Atat was cheaper. This thing, 150 is a bit much, but I still think it's worth 150. This thing is pretty awesome. Now, in terms of the main design, this thing is what I'd call a complete and utter revolutionary design. Everything, everything is at an upgrade. The last at at didn't even have an interior, hardly an interior. Even other walkers like the ATM-6 from the First Order, very bare bones interior. And then they come out with this thing. It's very strong and sturdy. It has a full interior. You can sit your clone troopers down. There's a speeder bike in the back. No unnecessary side builds in the set. There are no unnecessary side builds. Uh, a speeder bike can be stored in the back of the at at. Loads of little like detail, uh, details and greebles on the outside are all super accurate. You have an e-web uh, e -web turret that could be stored inside. You have the working winch for Luke. Some ATATs haven't included that feature. Others they use like really sort of like bare bones ways of representing that uh, sort of winch. Luke actually has the proper winch. He can winch himself up to a little makeshift door, which I think is so awesome. Uh, with this at as well, you can set the accurate three figures in the cockpit. You can get three figures in the cockpit. Uh, the cannons are well represented, and I think the integration of the spring-loaded missiles is also really nice. Getting into the minifigs, there are no unnecessary figures, no bad figures in this set. Every figure's awesome. You have Luke, who is easily probably the worst figure of the set, purely because Luke in his X-Wing pilot um, uniform has been seen a lot, uh, but he is still a great figure, comes with a thermal detonator as well, always nice to see. You have uh, brand new, exclusive, wonderful General Veers. He has that wonderful new uh, sort of helmet piece there with the printed visor. Most of the figures, the attack figures we get here, are still fine. And then we get a couple of clone, uh, sorry, snow troopers, Imperial snow troopers. Uh, this set also goes along really well with the Hoth Battle Pack. The Hoth Battle Pack is out now, and you can get a bunch more uh, Snow Troopers in there as well for your at and fill it out. But yeah, this set is, of course, spoiler alert for my review. It's a 10 out of 10. I've probably rambled way too much about it. It's my favourite set. I love it. I cannot wait to review it. 10 out of 10, badass seal of approval. Also, something to point out. This set is about to retire. It's retiring of Christmas this year. If you don't own this wonderful set, if you want an at if you like the Empire, if you love Empire Strikes Back like everyone else, if you, like, if you, you can't go wrong with buying this is what I'm trying to say. It's about to sell out. It's about to go. You need to get this thing. Next up, we have a set from 2019. I have no idea how this thing is still going. I, again, thought this would be long gone retired, but it is retiring at the end of this year. If you don't have this thing, it's about to go. It's set 75257, the Millennium Falcon from Rise of Skywalker. And a little part of me kicks myself for not buying this. I don't own this set, I own the Force Awakens version. If I was to keep a version of my Millennium Falcon, if I was to have this one or my Force Awakens version, I would have the Force Awakens version. That's purely because that set to me is the most nostalgic LEGO Star Wars set of all time. It's what got me into LEGO. But this thing, as a LEGO set, this Falcon is way better in every single way. Now, 
do not buy your kid this falcon if they own any other Millennium Falcon. Like, you don't need this. This set is £150. Again, that's quite a big ask, and I, I think it's borderline justifiable. It's borderline justifiable for £150. Uh, in terms of the upgrades, this is a revolutionary design for a Millennium Falcon. It's another revolutionary set. The panels, uh, they have reworked the panels so there are no gaps. When I review my Force Awakens Falcon, you'll see the sort of little pizza slices that lift up uh, to make up uh, the sort of exterior hull. Yeah, that's gone with this set. They've, uh, I think, done some like plate work on the interior, some like hinge work uh, to essentially just eliminate all of the gaps. And it looks so clean. Also, the cockpit is in more accurate position. The cockpit is shifted back. One thing I do want to touch upon, though, with these uh, the updated uh, accurate hull, is that whilst we have no gaps at the top, it's a bit of a double-edged sword because we have gaps uh, on the little undersides. I don't know if you can see here. Uh, but where the mandibles connect to the main hull, there's like gaps that run along. That is unfortunate. Getting into the figures of this Falcon, I think it has the worst figure selection of a Millennium Falcon. It's still a good figure selection. The figure selection is not bad in this set. It's just not as good. I think the best system set Falcons figures have probably got to go to the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon, which is ironic, because that Millennium Falcon is easily the worst, uh, What barring the original Millennium Falcon, I think the worst Falcon. Uh, but the figure selection is okay. Lando's pretty good. Uh, Lando's probably one of the most exciting figures of the set. I like the colours, the sort of uh, the blue and the yellow works well together. Chewie's Chewie, no one really cares. 3PO is 3PO, no one really cares. R2 is R2, no one really cares. We've seen them all before. Uh, Finn is a pretty decent figure. He comes in the Sith TIE Fighter, which is a horrendous set from Rise of Skywalker. Uh, but the most exciting figure, I think, is Bulio. Uh, he was a bit of a meme in the LEGO Styles community. And uh, Bulio is a good figure. He's got a very nice uh, custom molded head there. Uh, and he does look good, and of course you get a little Dio there as well. Uh, in terms of the ranking, of course this set's a 10 out of 10. There's nothing to stop this set from getting a 10 out of 10. Uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, there's very, as I obviously I've talked about, very, very little flaw with this. It's pretty perfect, and yeah, if you don't have a Millennium Falcon as a LEGO Star Wars fan, what are you doing? In terms of ranking, of course. In terms of ranking, what do you think this set is? there any point in me saying this? This is the big top five, right? Of sets that have actually survived. Most other Rise of Skywalker sets have gone. They've gone. Even Kylo Ren's shuttle's gone now. But this set remains. That tells you something. It sold well, and it's a 10 out of 10. The next one on the big... Uh, top five is a set that I actually thought retired. I had no idea this thing was still running, but it's the Razor Crest. You, if you're a fan of Mandalorian, which pretty much any anyone, you don't even have to be a Star Wars fan to be a fan of Mandalorian. This set is the set to buy. It is chunky. It's beefy. It's heavy. That's the one thing I learnt when I put this thing together, uh, and I will do a review on it at some point. But yeah, this thing is very, very sizable. That's one thing you will learn when you build it. It hasn't got the most accurate shaping. Now, the shaping is a bit wonky throughout this model, but it's still pretty damn good. It's 120 quid, 120 pounds for this thing. Cheaper than the Atat, cheaper than the Falcon. I don't think you should get this thing over the ATT. -E. You should definitely buy the ATT -E over this thing. But again, it depends what you like. If you are such a big fan of Mandalorian, you have to get this thing right. Unless you want to pool your money to the UCS version, which is it's debatable. Uh, I mean, in terms of features, yeah, you have that wonderful uh, custom printed cockpit piece. Interiors already. There's such a big, good interior. Massive interior in this thing. There's uh, carbonite blocks at the bottom. You have the foldable ramp that comes out. Uh, there is some uh, spring loaded missiles that are pretty well integrated. Uh, obviously nothing special, but it does work and it does look good on a shelf still. Uh, but the one thing that I don't like is the figure selection. The figure selection kind of sucks. Uh, you have Grogu, you have the child, which of course, he's pretty standard. Uh, this was his debut into LEGO Star Wars. He's of course no longer exclusive now, he's in a bunch of other sets. Uh, you have Mando in his uh, non-Beskar armor. Mando from like, uh, episode 1, episode 2 of season 1. It's a really cool Mando figure, of course, it's now not as cool as the new UCS Mando figure, but it's still pretty decent. Uh, I just wish it was his Beskar one, because of course, I mean, let's be honest now, no one's picking that uh, this figure over the Beskar version. 
Then we have Grief Cargo, who's a really disappointing figure. Uh, Lego just didn't do any leg printing. That's the only thing wrong with Grief Cargo. So the uh, the, the nice uh, cape, the nice uh, draped cloth over his shoulder just disappears. It's an incredibly lazy figure. I, I really don't like Grief Cargo. You have IG-11, who's nothing special. It's pretty much IG-88 with a different print. But he is still cool, and he is exclusive. And then you have a random Scout Trooper. Now, uh, obviously, we know the Scout Trooper was in Mandalorian. He's from the scenes where is like uh, punching Grogu in the bag with the speeder bikes, but none of that's included. It's again, surprise, surprise, big set, good set. Lego, of course, pulls more resources, more money into it. They do it well. It's a 10 out of 10. This set is, a, again, it's another 10 out of 10. Spoiler for the review, I'm sorry, <laughs> but here we go. And last, but certainly not least, we have the Inquisitor Transport Scythe, brand new for 2022. This thing costs 90 quid. Budget, prices are going up, times are tough right now for the working class, which is what our community is, and a lot of people around the area here are. What a great set to buy. 90 quid for this big, big... I have hardly anything negative to say about this thing. And you're probably wondering, well, Jacob, why haven't you got this if... Uh, <laughs> if it's 90 quid, it's really good. And that's a good question, because I don't know. I just haven't got this yet. I don't know if I will get this. I own a lot of really cool shuttles. Uh, Kylo shuttle. I have the 2015 Lambda shuttle, which is my personal favourite LEGO Star Wars system set of all time. I will do a review on that at some point. But yeah, back to this. It's, it's a cool set. I, I just haven't felt the need to buy this. Uh, your kid is going to love this. The figures on this set are great. You have Kenobi, who's really, really good. Not as good as the Kenobi figure from his Delta 7, but it is still a great figure. Uh, Grand Inquisitor, great. Reva, again, we don't judge figures by their characters. Reva's a great figure. And the fifth brother, who is... Uh, the fifth brother is probably my favourite figure in the set, actually. I really like that fifth brother figure. Great, I mean, great set. They use that uh, Speed Champions cockpit. Uh, and there is such, yeah, there's a lot you can do with this, surprisingly. Of course, the wings fold out. It's a Star Wars shuttle. Uh, you have your ramp at the front there. Uh, you have some details in the back. Big interior. That's another great thing. Usually, I mean, Kylo shuttle, very small interior. You're not that much to do. The Lambda shuttle from 2015, again, quite a small interior. This thing's got a big interior, and that's great. Uh, and this set has stickers which is really weird i don't know why it has stickers because it doesn't need any stickers this set could have no stickers and it's perfect so yeah if you're not a sticker fan if you don't like stickers which is most people uh you don't need to apply them you don't need to apply the stickers it's great and yeah out of 10 this thing gets a nine this thing gets a nine out of ten i think that's purely because of the design of the craft in universe i just don't really like it but great figures, great use of space, great details, no like colours showing through, everything looks perfect. I'm sure it's a strong build. And yeah, not a lot of negative things to say about this thing. It's pretty damn perfect. Quickly getting into some quick, small, honourable mentions. I'm going to skim over these, I'm not going to spend too long talking about them. First up, we have the Fiver First Legion, a set that I've already reviewed. Now this set is actually sold out on lego.com so i don't know the availability of it but it's a wonderful set it is it's uh now down to 17 pounds on lego.com <sighs> yeah i think this thing's actually gone uh it's a 10 out of 10 it's wonderful uh there are two really good builds in this you have a good uh easily the best clone scout walker lego's ever made great figures fantastic figures of this set uh, they are oversized builds. I did talk about how I could maybe restructure that in my review. If you want to go full in depth on the set, just watch my review. Uh, but it is a great set and that's probably gone now. Now getting into my favourite of all of these sets. Another one that's on its way. It will be here at some point and it's the only, it's the only 2022 set I've bought. It's the only 2022 set I've actually bought wanted uh for whatever reason or another and it's obi-wan's delta 7 i love this set i cannot wait to review it the figures are great it is one of the it is yeah the best delta 7 legos ever made uh people are complaining about the gappy wings it does have gappy wings uh you can fix those uh very easily but it is a bit unfortunate uh it's not very uh sort of elegant and angular as it should be down the uh down the front it should be a little bit more uh 
sort of flat down the front. It is quite boxy. That's purely for LEGO Switch Feature the Astromech Droid. They've shown us that before. It is what it is. Uh, yeah, it's the very first Tonwi figure, very first Kamen Owen figure ever in LEGO. Looks brilliant. It's probably one of the best Obi-Wan figures LEGO has ever made. The detail on the Obi-Wan is spectacular if you look up close. Uh, it is a bit expensive. It should be a 20, uh, 25 quid vehicle set. It's 30. That is very unfortunate, but it's okay. The set is brilliant. 10 out of 10. It's it's a wonderful small vehicle set, and this is the best small gift for 30 quid here. Every kid is going to appreciate this. It's awesome. Finally, we have a set that I didn't really think I'd include in these quick honourable mentions. It's the small, scaled-down version of the Imperial TIE Fighter. Now, pretty much all of these other scaled-down LEGO sets are absolutely terrible. Uh, like, the X-Wing, the Imperial Shuttle are insults, the complete insults to their previous versions, and they're just not my cup of tea, but this one's really good! It's the Imperial TIE Fighter. Very spherical, which is what we're looking for in a TIE Fighter. Uh, very, very small. It is much smaller, not minifig scale for a TIE Fighter, but it's 40 quid, which isn't bad considering that TIE Fighters are now, like, what, 80 quid? So it's half price for a small... Uh, for a small TIE Fighter, you can still put your figure in there fine, they're still accurate spring-loaded missiles that look really good in their positions, uh, still very nice printed elements. I don't know if there's any stickers, I don't think there's any stickers in this one, but it definitely looks great. You get some decent figures as well, you get a, uh, I don't know if this uh, protocol droid is exclusive, I don't know why I'm thinking he comes in the UCS Death Star, I don't know if he does, but you get a uh, Stormtrooper and a TIE Fighter pilot, pretty bog standard, but that's what we're looking for in a TIE Fighter. Lots of modern TIE Fighters cram a bunch of figures in that you don't want, uh, and this one keeps it short and sweet. Yeah, great gift, great TIE Fighter. Now I'm sorry I did skim over uh, all of those little, I mean they're, they're, those gifts, they're just small little gifts that you can uh, throw to like a neighbour or a niece or someone, but they're all great sets. Now I'm going to get into sets that I don't like, uh, and I'm probably going to get a bit of backlash for this because obviously we all have different opinions. Again, if you like the set, you like the set. Hey, that's not my fault. <laughs> like whatever you want, but this is just my opinion and my guide. Starting up, we have the 75301 X-Wing. I hate this set. I really hate this set. 45 quid. I think there's a lot of other sets you can uh, buy that's more worth your money than this set. And the reason is, the reason why I don't like this is because it's just, it looks cheap. The TIE Fighter looks really well made, it looks really well uh, neat, like neatly groomed, everything looks uh, precise and sharp on the TIE Fighter. And then you get to this, which is the TIE Fighter's counterpart, and it's all like open and it looks unfinished and it's lumpy and bumpy. And considering that the, the 2018 T65, which is in my top 10 of best LEGO Star Wars system sets of all time. I cannot wait to review my T65 from 2018. And this just feels like an insult to that set. That set was so beautiful. They did so many things right. And then they retire that set and release this. Uh, yeah, quickly skimming over this. It's boxy. It's got like little bits all over it. It just, it looks lumpy and bumpy and wrong. Uh, figures. They re-released my Tantive 4 layers. That's, a, <laughs> that's another reason I don't like this set. Uh, my New Hope layer is no longer exclusive. Uh, she was also re-released in the little uh, Death Star Attack set, but that set she had her legs, so my version was still exclusive. But then they came up with this, and my Tantive 4 version is no longer exclusive, so I'm kind of kind of a little bit upset about that. Uh, you also get General Dodonna, which is a really nice figure. He's a great figure. He's the best figure of this set easily. He's a great figure. I don't know if it's the first time we've ever seen him in LEGO Star Wars, but he appears new. And then you get Luke and Artu, which is same old, same old. I don't absolutely hate this set. I just dislike it very much. And uh, if you like it, you like it. I just think there's better things to spend 45 quid on. Next up, we're going to talk about a set that's probably controversial. This is the TX-130, also known as the Republic Fighter Tank, set 75342. Now, this, just look at this thing. Just look at that and tell me that it doesn't look hideous. Now, I had the privilege of uh, being a LEGO Star Wars fan back 2015, 2016, 2017. I own the 2017 TX-130, which now will run you about 100 quid on the secondary market. If you really want a TX-130, of course, get this one. But the 2017 one is better in every single way, barring the minifig selection. This thing 
It's 40 quid. 40 quid for this, man. The old one was 25. And uh, it has one of my favourite LEGO Star Wars minifigs of all time. It has Alias Akira in some beautiful dark azure LEGO plastic. This thing has Mace Windu. We've seen a lot of Mace Windu recently. But the big excitement is, of course, his clone Legion. The purple clones. The uh, 187th, I believe they're called. The clones are awesome. But the tank is terrible. And if you ask me, you should not be spending 40 quid for three clone troopers. This thing is lumpy, it's bumpy, it's kind of insulting as a Battlefront 2 fan how inaccurate this thing is. And I know there's different versions of the TX-130, but the older one from 2017 is way more accurate. And I know this one resembles a lot more of the original TX-130 from like the comic books. But it still looks worse than the 2008 version, I'm sorry. They use like an X-Wing cockpit on the front, which just looks cheap. There's like a lot of big pieces in this set and a lot of stickers as well. Yeah, I don't like this. It's another set I don't like. I'm going to make it clear. And I also think there's the deal, the value for 40 quid is just not here. 40 pounds is not worth this set. Again, if you like it, buy it. The figures are awesome. I'm not dogging on the figures. The figures are awesome. I just don't think you should buy this set at all. Okay, I'm I'm actually baffled with this next one. This set goes for me. It went down as one of the worst uh, and most disappointing Lego Star Wars sets of all time. Uh, this set was an abomination on like every single front. This is Cad Bane's Justify from the Bad Batch set seven five three two three. And I used to really, I mean, there was a meme in the LEGO Star Wars community saying, oh, the unjustifiable justifier, right? Because this thing was £180. LEGO had the audacity to sell this product, this, for 180 That's as much as the Tantive 4, right? And now I've just looked as I'm filming this video, and it's actually, it's 150 on LEGO.com. So they've reduced the price. They, 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 they've reduced the price, unless I'm missing something, but it was 180 They've reduced the price. So now my all of my opinions have now changed. This set's not very good, right? It's big, it's grey, it's ugly. That's I mean, there's lots of stickers. If you look at the, uh, the main cockpit, it's a sticker. And also, there's all of this space. None of it is usable. This set does not have an interior. Uh, you have a sort of uh, you have a decent cockpit, and then behind the cockpit you have a little jail cell to put Omega. But besides that, that's it. Because the uh, the designer they worked in this like really unnecessary like landing gear feature as you put down the big uh, rear thruster, the land uh, the landing gears will pop out. Yeah, that was a, a really unnecessary feature. Instead, we should have had an interior. That's my major gripe with this set. Also, with the fact that uh, it's just not very pretty and it just doesn't look good on a shelf, really. Uh, coupled with the price, but that's now changed. This set's okay to buy. If you want to buy this set, buy this set. This was like the major one to avoid. This was my major point. Oh, do not buy this set. But then I've looked at the price. It's 150 And... Uh, is it justifiable? I'll leave you to decide in the comments whether it's justifiable, but it's okay, you know? I, it's not. It's no longer an absolute abomination. It has uh, 1,022 parts, and the figure selection is awesome. That's the major part of this set. The figure selection is absolutely awesome. You get Cad Bane, Cad Bane for the first time since 2013. Uh, you have, of course, Omega, a brand new and exclusive figure. You have Toto, who is a Cad Bane's little droid. He's a brand new exclusive figure, little mold. Uh, you get a re-release of Fennec. Uh, Fennec is a fine figure. Uh, and then, of course, you get uh, Hunter, who is uh, re-released from the uh, Bad Batch shuttle. So, yeah. I don't hate this set anymore, and it's actually, it's on sale, if you are, if you live in the UK, it is on sale right now, uh, at Game, and I think, I think Game might be a universal brand, but it's 105 quid, on Game, buy it, <laughs> buy it. So that's my Christmas guide of LEGO Star Wars 2022, I appreciate you for sticking through this video, I know it is a long one, it's more of a essay based video, I've tried to, uh, definitely uh, hold back on some of the things that I wanted to say. I've cut lots out. Uh, and yeah, leave your opinions down below. Do you have uh, any of these sets? Are you going to buy them? I hope this was helpful to parents especially. And I will see you guys next time. If you'd like to leave a subscribe, please do. It helps the channel. I'm trying to grow. And yeah, this is just a bit of a different style of content. Thanks for watching.